don't care if you need it. Okay, well, I'm going to say goodbye. I don't care. Good morning, everybody. Man, this is bright. How's everybody doing today? Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk, the hangover edition. Yes, I am hungover. Um, it happens to the best of us. Typically, the best of us are 22 and not 40 and don't have a giant zit on their face. Um, so, uh, okay, so long day yesterday, obviously you guys know that I pitched my movie yesterday and I know a lot of you want to know how it went. So I'm going to tell you real quick. Uh, I was very nervous in the room. I'm not going to lie. I was a lot more nervous than I thought I was going to be. I felt like I was very robotic. But my producers said that I that it went really well, so I'm gonna trust them. And now we, you know, we leave it out there. I did um, the best job that I. I don't know. I don't think I did the best job I could do because I know I can do better. But it is what it is. So you leave it in the room and you pray it goes your way. What 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 are you gonna do? Um, so we hope to know something by Tuesday of next week. Man, this is it. Seriously, it's blowing my face up. Um, and then I went to go work. I had a couple of meetings um, and I had a meeting with my agent who got engaged. And that was so exciting. The problem was that I started drinking at four o'clock. I stopped drinking at 12 o'clock. Um, I don't typically drink like that because who, what, like mom has a life like that. Like who could just be like, it's four o'clock. I'm going to start drinking till midnight. <laughs> I, <laughs> that is not me. Um, I typically drink one, like once, maybe twice a week when I'm home. And I usually have one or two drinks. Yesterday, apparently I thought I was 21, still in college, void of responsibility. I was wrong. I am not 21, I am 40, um, I am not still in college, I am far, far away, like a galaxy, far, far away, and, um, and I have lots of responsibility, so cheers to that. You drink like you're 21 and you wake up 40, it's not so easy, um, but anyway, it was fun, and I got to see um, my friend Ryan last night. Um, Ryan was the publicist for Jersey Bell. So it was so fun to catch up with him. Now he's director of PR for E! And um, we were just talking about PR and work and blah, blah, blah. And then, I don't know, what theme song is that? I don't even know. Guess who walks in? There he was, just walking down the street, singing do I did. Okay, he doesn't sing that song. But you guys know what's coming, don't you? You know what's coming. Rhymes with Schmeinel. Mm. My bestie's leaving for a flight. Hold on. I love you so much. That's me. Safe, you safest up? flight ever. Thank you. Will you text me when you land? Yeah, and I'm going to go through all your clothes and put your bras on my head. <laughs> Have so much fun. You. Love you. So, um, yes, so uh, Lionel and I had um, a drink to celebrate. And, like, I'm going to tell you, uh, yes, I'm sure, yes, Charlotte, I am. It, it is... I told him that I made the video where I said that he was my boyfriend and then made a video and said we broke up and he was like so let me get this straight I was your boyfriend and then we broke up 
before I even really knew you. And I was like, yes, Lionel, what do you mean? You're everybody's boyfriend <laughs> and you don't know half of us. Um, but he's so great. He really is like, he's, and he like, he's, I don't even know, but he's great. Um, so anyway, I wanted to tell you something that I thought was so profound. I had an aha moment last night and I wanted to share it with you. So last night I'm talking to a friend who, who had this job and he's talking about his job and he's like, now he is legitimately one of the best um, publicists that I know. So hear me out, follow me. I know I'm slow here, folks, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm hungover, but just come on, stick with me here. Um, okay, so he's one of the best publicists that I know. And he got this new job and the job was so dysfunctional. The department was so poorly run and so dysfunctional that it got to the point where they had him questioning whether he was even good at his job anymore. And when he said that to me, I thought, oh my word, how many times have we been in a role in our life, whether it's wife or mother or friend or sister or daughter or professional or whatever, where we are surrounded by um, people who are either threatened by what we're doing or people who um, who are dealing with their own crap and they project all of that onto us and we start to wonder if it's us. Am I just not a good wife? Am I just like a really bad wife? No, maybe your husband is a big fat jerk. Am I just a terrible mom? Am I just like a terrible mom? No, maybe your kids are ingrates. Yeah, maybe you made some mistakes, sure. But maybe your kids are a bunch of ingrates, right? Or like when you try to have relationships with in-laws, right? Or sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws, mother-in-laws, anybody, and you they make it feel like you are the one that is impossible to get along with. It is you, it is you, it is you. You can't, um, everything is a projection. You know, there's a saying that when you point a finger at somebody, you've got three pointing back at yourself, right? So yes, very similar to narcissists. But I realized like how many people in your life that critique you in a role that you play in your life are actually the ones with the issues. Because listen, I'll be the first to say when I'm the one with the issue. When it's me, I'm like, ooh, Jamie, you are not wifing at all today. You are not wifing well. You are a crappy wife today. You need to wife better. I'm the first to say it. But when Michael and I were fighting last week, at two weeks ago, you know how sometimes when you fight, people say things to make it worse? Michael said something very hurtful to me about the way I parent, which is hysterical because I've been trying to talk to him about the way he parents for nine years, but whatever. Um, and, and it made me question. I was like, am I, am I a bad mom? Maybe I'm a bad mom. Am I a bad mom? And then I realized like, no, take it from where it's coming from. This is a man who is fighting with you, who wants to say something that will get a reaction out of you. You're not a bad mom. Don't let what people say make you actually question how you play the roles you play in your life. My mother's always like, you know, you, know, you don't call me, you don't pick up the phone to ever call your mother. And I'm like, damn, am I a terrible daughter? And then I realize, no, Susan, I don't pick up the phone all the time to call you because when I do, you try to manipulate my emotions or hijack my conversations or question my marriage. And so, no, I don't always pick up the phone to call you. But when they first say it, you start going, damn, like, am I a really bad daughter? I might be a really bad daughter. Or maybe I'm just doing every single thing I can to protect my peace. And sometimes picking up the phone to call you makes me feel less peaceful. And I want to be full of peace. 
peace train sounding loud of wine on the peace train. Okay, and sometimes, Debbie, it does feel like it's coming from all directions. People constantly like questioning, you know, your, you know, I, oh my God, Jamie, can you speak? I think I can. When you, I have people in my life who say passive aggressive things like, oh, it must be really hard on the kids when you're always, um, you know, traveling so much. And I think, oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they, I think we're okay. Then I show up at the soccer field and the first thing out of the, one of somebody's, one of the husband's mouth is, oh, you're here. That surprises me. You're never here. Excuse, excuse me? I never miss a soccer game. And I don't appreciate your passive aggressive comment in front of a whole team full of parents. Okay, so why don't you take the words you just put out into the universe and shove them right up your ass. Just a thought, just a thought. You don't have to do what I suggest, but just saying. So my point is that I, um, that then I, it starts to make me a uh, question. Oh my, am I a terrible mother? Am I the worst mom ever because I, um, you know, I travel for work. Is this real? I don't like that. No. If, if you, uh, what's the saying? I know there's like a funny meme or something. When you, when people make you feel bad and you need to actually like make, when they qu make you question how you are as a human being, you need to make sure that you are not just in fact surrounded by assholes. There's a good chance you are. And here's the thing. We need to own our, uh, you know, shortcomings, 100%. I'm not always the best mom. I'm not always the best wife. I do travel for work. I do, um, you know, I, uh, I'm not always the best friend. I'm not always the best at my job. But it is so funny when someone else is having a bad day, how quickly they can make you question your effectiveness in your life. And you're suddenly like, wait a minute, maybe I'm not good at my job. Maybe I'm not a good friend, right? And then you realize, uh, don't take your out, stuff out on me. No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm Ross Keller. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I am fine. Um, anyway, I just want what I wanted to say. Okay, that I may not be doing the most effective job saying is that a lot of times when people are going through something in their own space, when they feel faulty in one of their roles, hurt people hurt, they will project that onto you. They will project it. You know, think of yourself as Velcro. If you get too close to somebody who's throwing negativity, it will eventually stick to you and you will start second guessing yourself. Like, uh, I don't know that I'm, am I a good person? Am I, really? I can remember, this is the last thing I'm gonna say and then I'm gonna let you go. So you don't have to look at this zit on my face anymore. But I can remember one time, this woman sending me uh, a message about coffee talk. Okay, this, oh my gosh, I never told you guys this, but this is super real. Um, this woman sent me a message about Coffee Talk and she was like, how much longer are you gonna do this? You're boring me. Instead of just unfollowing me or not watching anymore, she felt the best thing to do would, say, would be to message me and say, how long are you gonna keep doing this? You're boring me. And I, for like two days, walked around in a fog. I was like, is Coffee Talk boring? Should I stop doing it? Should I like sign off and just never sign on again? Be like a mystery person who just disappears? Um, it is amazing how sometimes people can like make you question your roles in your life. And you're like, you're sitting there like, wait. And then you gotta, you gotta step back and you gotta get some clarity. You gotta step back and take a hard look at yourself and go like, have I been a bad wife? Have I been a bad mother? 
Am I not a good friend? Have I not been a good friend? Take the criticism from where it's coming from, evaluate it, sure. But like, don't let it actually change the way you feel about yourself. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Don't do what I did, kids. Stay in school. Okay. Anyway, look, it's fine. Not everybody is gonna find every coffee talk every day entertaining or relatable. You know, that's not like a real thing. It just isn't. Um, but my point of sharing that with you is because what I'm saying is I allowed it to actually question my purpose. I allowed her comments to make me question whether I was still a, a, a benefit to you, whether I was an asset, whether my contribution still mattered or was entertaining for you or engaging or good enough or whatever. And, um, and the truth is we have to stop doing that. We have to stop doing that to ourselves. Stop allowing people to do that to us. Um, I am, no, Andrew, you're not the only guy here, I promise. Um, for those of you that are on my Instagram, if you go watch my stories, I can't be responsible for what the last few are, but I'm pretty sure you might see Schmeinel. Um, so go check it out and take a long, hard look at the critics in your life. Are they qualified to be criticizing your life? Really? Are the critics in your life even qualified? Stop taking criticism from people who have built nothing, from people who have no stability. Stop taking criticism from people who, who don't get paid to criticize. They just do it because they don't know what else to do with themselves. Um, thank you to everybody who shares the video. There's a little share button right there. You can always share the video. You can find me on Instagram if you want. It's Jamie P. Sullivan. You've been warned. It's completely inappropriate, irreverent, over-sexual. Clearly on Facebook, I am a 40-year-old mother of three, devote, devoted wife, mother of three, and on Instagram, I am a 16-year-old, irreverent, single, white female. Okay? That's true. Um, I was drunkstagramming last night. I can't be responsible for what's there. Uh, but it is fun. Somebody needed to hear this today. And somebody, um, oh, Felicia, you are my love. Y'all hold on, don't, don't, uh, Tiffany, you've been warned. You're going to my Instagram. You've been warned. Uh, hold on, wounded warriors, don't go anywhere. And listen, if anybody criticizes your life, like I said, take the criticism from where it's coming from, evaluate it, and if it's crap, release it immediately. Send it back. Don't be delusional. Don't be the person who can never look at criticism because that doesn't work either. But if it is crap, send it back. Um, I love you guys so much today. I have meetings today and then I'm on the red eye back to Birmingham. Misty, good luck on my Instagram page. You've been warned. Um, I'm going to take the red eye, which is never fun, to Atlanta. Listen to this, Joy people. I'm going to land in Atlanta at 5.30 in the morning. And then I'm going to find my car, and I'm going to drive back to Birmingham two hours after not sleeping. And then I'm going to go to like 9,000 soccer games, 400 birthday parties, and two partridges in a pear tree. Um, and anybody who tells me I'm not a good mom can suck an egg. I love you all so much today. Really and truly, I do. Um, and I will see you later, alligator. Have a great day.